Hello, everyone. Susan Campfield here. Goodness, I uh, had a little, uh, <laughs> I was talking to myself, <laughs> had a little snafu there. How are you? Happy Tuesday. Thanks so much for joining me for tonight's Tuesday tutorial. Um, you might be watching on my Susan Campfield YouTube channel or perhaps on my Facebook group, my Sue Stamfield Facebook group, or on my Susan Campfield Independent Demonstrator Facebook page. Wherever you're watching from, welcome. Jean's here. Hi, Jean. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. Um, tonight, I had a request. And so the request I had was for um, uh, how to do the pinwheel tower card. Pinwheel tower card um, has kind of been all the rage this summer. And um, I, I had a request, at least I think that's what my customer was asking about when she described the card. If I missed it, we'll, we'll try again, but um, I'm, I'm always welcome, uh, open to your requests. So, um, so this one goes out to Linda and anyone else that is um, interested in how to make this fun fold card. Jennifer's here, awesome. Roz is here, Teresa, Bonnie, fabulous. Patricia, thanks so much, Jean's here. Thanks for tuning in. So much more fun to do this with you and not feel like I'm talking to myself, right? <laughs> so um, so on our Tuesday tutorial tonight, we are going to be doing the, the pinwheel tower card. I'm going with a Halloween theme on this one. However, this fun fold could be used for any um, any occasion. I watched a number of different videos on how to make this card and kind of came up with my favorite way to do it. There's always tweaks that you can do. And so I'm excited to share those with you tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over to my desktop here and here we go. So I'm going to be using the Frightfully Cute Bundle tonight. We've been using this quite a bit lately because I really love it. Um, mostly for some treat holders. Um, uh, our Frankenstein, our Dracula boxes here with the Tombstone treat boxes. And most recently our, um, our little haunted house that I made with the Tombstone treat boxes. This, you know, could totally be made into a card, right? Like this could be the card front with the, uh, you could do a house shaped card. How fun would that be? Um, of course, this one is a treat holder and it does have a little pop up there. And this also is using the products from this frightfully cute bundle. As you can see, I love this bundle and I've been using it a lot. There's a lot of variety here with um, the cobweb and the witch's hat and the owl, just lots of fun things. And I like these dies. So these are the frightful tag dies and they are actually standalone dies. So it is a bundle opportunity, but if you don't need the stamp set, you could just get the dies and you would be totally fine. So let's set those aside, but I don't want to set them too far away and let's go ahead and make our card. So the designer paper that I'm using tonight is the Cute Halloween designer paper, and it is cute and it is Halloween. So the name is perfect for this particular paper. And on the back side of this, oh, thank you, Judy. Judy's just showing a happy anniversary. It's my husband and I's 30th wedding anniversary uh, just recently here on September 28th. So on the back side of the paper is black and white and some gray in there as well. And so for this card, we're going to be using quite a bit of these papers. Um, this card gives you a lot of opportunities to use your designer paper. And I know we all have it because we hoard it, right? <laughs> so I'm going to bring in my trimmer. I'm going to bring in my cheat sheet of dimensions. I will show this again, but if you're uh, watching on a device where you're able to take a screenshot, you're welcome to do that. I will also post it um, on my YouTube channel as uh, in the description for this video. Now, yesterday there was a major outage with Facebook. And um, so those of you that are watching on Facebook, I would encourage you to, um, if you haven't done so already, follow my YouTube channel because I always have that as an option. Um, so if one's down, I can, can go with the other, right? So I'm gonna start with the base of our pyramid card. And for the base of our card, I'm going to use designer series paper. The first pyramids that I saw, uh, not pyramids, pinwheels. I keep calling it a pyramid. It's a pinwheel tower card. The first tower cards I saw actually were made with cardstock for the center tower column. And um, it does make for a very thick card then. So um, 
Lee, Lee, I know you guys don't celebrate Halloween there, so that's okay. You'll still know this fold and you can easily adapt this to Christmas or um, really just any occasion, birthday, whatever, depending on the designer paper, but at least you'll get the fold down. So um, what I have here is a piece of designer series paper that is four and a quarter by four and a half. And we're going to be scoring that at one, two, three, and four. How easy is that? One, two, three, and four. Uh, again, initially, the first ones I saw were four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I tried that, and it didn't give me very much room for my adhesives. So I, I adjusted the measurements a little bit. And then I was watching my team member Rachel's video with for this card, and she did the same thing. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, I know I'm on the right path. Rachel and I were on the same wavelength there. So I'm going to score this at one. And I'm going to slide it over to, you know what, I, I'm doing it backwards. Okay, I scored it at one. Now let's slide out to two. It's going to be easier for you to see. Yes, okay. Whoops, not the cutting blade, Susan. The light gray is the scoring blade. And um, I, I, I really need to put a little label on here so that I don't ever mix those up. Now I'm going to score it at three inches. And again at four inches. So we've got our four and a half inch piece of paper that is scored, scored at one, two, three, and four. So that is going to give us, put this away because we are all done with the trimmer. All done. Um, so that is going to give us a piece of paper that is um, scored here when we grab a bone folder. So we've got a one inch column, oh, one inch panel, and another one inch panel, and another one inch panel, and another another one inch panel and that leaves us with a half inch piece to put our adhesive on so if you recall it was four and a half so one two three four and then there's the half and that's where we're going to put our adhesive and this is four and a quarter tall so I'm going to go ahead and add my adhesive to this now you could go with anything here um, I believe on my original I did tear and tape which would work I'm on this one I'm going to actually use oh I'm doing the wrong one dang it all right, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I'm doing the wrong side. Okay, so this is the seal plus. So um, I was actually going to, I think I still can. I wanted the black and white. I don't know, what would we call that, you guys? What is? What would you call that pattern? It's almost like zebra spots that are like scribbles. I don't really know what you would say that. Um, does my description say pyramid tower? Oh my gosh, yes, it's a pinwheel. Okay, I'll have to change that. I'm, yeah, I kept getting mixed up for that. In fact, I originally searched for a pinwheel card and I didn't find anything because there isn't anything called that. So this will still work because I want this pattern on the inside. One side of this, the outside, is actually not going to show on our finished card. So we'll just fold that because it's not going to show. And this is not going to show very much, but it does show just a teeny bit. So there is our, that's our card base. How weird is that? <laughs> that is our spooky squiggles. Yeah, I like that, Mar Lisa. That's cool. Spooky squiggles in there. So, um, so this is the tower portion of the card. And we're going to get our, our panels that are going to form the rest of our card base. So these are four pieces that are four and a quarter by two and three quarters. Let's grab our cheat sheet one more time. we got our four panels there, four of them, two and three quarters by four and a quarter. And which is really, what's really nice about that is obviously cardstock in the U.S. comes eight and a half by 11. So this is four and a quarter. So it's an eight and a half by 11 cut in half and then cut into force. So this card basically takes half a sheet of cardstock, just like any other card. It's just a little bit different. So we're going to be sticking our cardstock onto this, this tower. We're going to adhere it right onto this, um, this tower piece. And I'm going to go ahead and just use my seal. And I've got enough room here for two strips of it. And I want to go right up next to that score line. I don't want this um, pastel stripey paper really to show at all. So I'm, I'm flattening it out with the edge here so that I have the contrast of my desk to make sure that none of that's going to show. It depends on your card. If your card was white and there was a white pattern, you know, 
it maybe wouldn't matter. With this one with the black cardstock, I just really don't want it to show at all. So now I'm going to flip it and I'm going to do the same thing on this column. And I'm just going to take the next panel and again, I'm going to stand up because We've talked about this, right? If I'm sitting down, I get it so crooked, you guys. I have to be looking a bird's eye view I need. All right, so we're just attaching. So we attach the first panel to one side of our tower. We're attaching the second panel to the second side of our tower. Just gonna continue on. And when I'm putting that adhesive on, I'm being careful to only put it on the one channel that I'm working on. And again, I'm going to line up the left edge to the left edge of the tower. And we've got that attached. So one, two, and three. And we have one left. And I know it seems odd, but this card will go into a standard envelope. And it will mail flat. Uh, because of the unique nature of this card i did not really add any dimensionals or ribbon or or lumpy embellishments which was super hard for me <laughs> that's not my normal as you know so um, so there we have our base to our card and and this card can be stand up below stood up to be displayed and that's when they can see the spooky squiggles as Lisa called them. So now we're ready to decorate our card and so to decorate our card I have a number of pieces of that fun cute paper so that we can decorate this. This card is so simple um, but it's adorable. So this is going to form uh, what I am going to consider the front of the card. Um, and we'll be turning the panels then um, and doing some decorating and you'll see how that goes. Um, I'm gonna, um, I was gonna bring in this, sorry, I forgot what I was doing. Um, I'm gonna talk just really quickly here on the sizes of the panels. The wider panels are, uh, you need four of them, two and a half by four. And then the narrow panels, which are gonna go on the narrow part, four of those, one and a half by four. And then we have one more piece that I'll talk about in just a little bit. Now you can use um, seal for this. You can use seal plus. This is obviously very lightweight stuff, so it doesn't matter. Again, I am still standing up because it's so much easier for me to get things straight this way. Is that the same for anyone? Does anyone else stand up when they craft? Um, I don't, particularly on video, I guess it's um, something I have to be aware of. Oh, I love this paper. How cute is that? All right. So this paper is called cute Halloween paper, <clears throat> which is, you know, perfect because it's cute Halloween paper, right? And let's see. Yeah. I like this, the spooky squiggles with Teresa says the spooky squiggles with the black. Um, they're really pretty. They are, they are very attractive. I agree. And there's actually a number of different ones that you could um, put on the inside tower, but I haven't used that particular pattern too much. I've used a lot of this paper, um, so it was perfect for that application because it was one I had plenty of. Oh, I just got adhesive on the front. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So I'm using uh, the pattern side of the papers to do the bigger panel, and then most of this, the panels on the inside are the back side which is the black and white with one exception so let's go to panel three here and then we're going to get it decorated and you know that's the fun part right that's when we get to use all our fun dies and stamps and labels to make it extra cute so we've got this fun candy paper we call it candy paper because it has candy on it all right, so this makes me think of black licorice, and I actually like black licorice. I know some people do not like black licorice, so let me know in the comments if you are a fan of, of uh, black licorice, because um, I actually like it. And that's what reminds me of those old candies that were white and black that were licorice. Does anyone remember those? I'm, I'm dating myself here big time. How cute is this little pumpkin and kitty face? Oh, so cute. And then we've got this fun 
this one, I'm not using the backside with the polka dots, although they are very cute. I decided that the uh, orange and black stripe actually went better with my black kitty and orange pumpkins. So I went with that. All right, so this is our card. So when the recipient pulls it out of an envelope, oh, let's see if we have an envelope. Hello, we do. We're gonna decorate it, don't, don't worry, we're not done. But when they pull it out of the envelope, it will be flat like this. And then they can turn each of the pages to see our fun little sentiments that we're going to add to it. So the reason that we chose to do designer paper for the center column, and that was a tip I got from Linda Dalkey, my friend in Australia, um, is because if that was cardstock, we would have, let's go back to the front of the card here, which is the ghost. We would have this piece of cardstock, the one below it, two layers of cardstock for the tower and one behind. It would make for an exceptionally thick card. So by using designer series paper for your tower portion, um, that gives you just a much uh, more streamlined and less bulky card. So let's do some decorating. Now you might be wondering, what is this piece for? This piece is to write our uh, greeting on. So that's gonna go on the very last page of our little, it's almost like a book this little card, um, the pin wheel card that Susan tends to call a pyramid card, which is not. So this little piece is one and a quarter by three and three quarters. And that's where I'll write with love, Susan, right? So let's go back to the beginning. I'm My beginning is going to be the ghost. And so I have a number of cute little um, things that I have pre-stamped and pre-die cut with our Frightful Tag dies and the Frightfully Cute uh, stamp set, so that bundle. So I use the black glitter paper here to do my spider web. And then we got less trick and more treatin'. So one thing that you can do with this card, again, this is how it's gonna come out of the envelope. So you can see that you actually can overhang your greeting on this first panel. So I'm gonna put this post-it note here and have that pretend to be our uh, greeting hanging over. So when that flips over, um, this one could have something hanging over on this side, but not this side, because if it hung over on this side, it wouldn't fit in the envelope anymore. So panel two can have something on the left, not the right. Panel three, however, could have something hangover if you want your options. So for my brain to be able to remember that, I put a post-it note there so that I can remember where I can um, hang over the edge and where I really can't. So I'm going to put my less trickin' more treatin' here on the front of my card. Uh, is that what I was going to do? Hmm, I think I'm going to change. I changed my mind several times, so you guys might have to help me decide how, no, that one's got to be the batty fruit. No, that one, that can be which way to the candy. Okay, well, we'll do it this way because I don't remember what way I was going to do it. So I think this is a cute for a front. What do you guys think? So I do want to make sure I can have that extend out the side, but I can't have it um, hang over this edge. It has to, to not go any farther than this point. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to put a, um, I'm going to just actually put a glue dot on the back here. Use my take your pick tool, pick that up. I'm going to put that on the center of my spider web. I did not use the adhesive sheets when I cut this out. Actually, I want that a little bit higher because I don't want to cover up this cute little ghosty and depending on where your pattern lies you know you might want to do it differently this is the front of the card so if you wanted to pop this up on dimensionals um, i think you would be fine doing that again because of the bulk of this card i am trying to restrain myself and not um, add any extra thickness to this card so we'll see how we like it at the end i'm going to add a couple of glue dots here uh, I only want to put them on the left and in the middle because the right of my label is going to be hanging out on the side here. Actually, I think I want that in a little bit so you can see a little bit more of that spooky spider web. So I'm only sticking it out a little bit. All right, so that is the front of my card is done to me. 
So I'm going to flip to this one. On this page, I'm going to do, um, we can do which way to the candy here. I want to make sure that my hat is not going to hang over. I think we're okay there. Let's put a glue dot on and we will check that. Ooh, lost it. We have a rogue glue dot, everyone. Nobody panic. I got it. It's been re recaptured. So let's see. Hi, Priscilla. Just clicked over a hundred days on lockdown. Ouch. Oh goodness. I hope so. Are you in um are you in Australia? Because I know that you guys have really been uh, dealing with a lot of lockdown there. So I certainly hope your days are soon to end at that not so fun thing. All right, we've got which way to the candy. Let's check it. Okay, it's not hanging over. So we've got our little witch's hat and I like how my cobweb from the front shows um, behind there. So it just makes it, it seems to hide the spider web, which the, the greeting, it does kind of hide the spider web a little bit. And you could show more of that but i wouldn't this cute little ghost to show so again it's totally up to you how you want to decorate that so that one is done and i'm going to go to this panel for this panel i'm going to do fatty for you because hello we have bats um now this one can hang over or not um let's try it i'm not I'm not sure if we're going to like it. We can move it if we don't like it. So I'm going to put a glue dot on here because glue dots are usually a little easier to get up and relocate if needed. So I've got my baddie for you. Now this little tag has a hole that you could put a ribbon or a piece of twine in. I don't want to do that because again, I'm trying to keep this card as flat as possible because of all the layers. So I'm actually gonna decorate that with a star um, just to cover up the hole. Uh, oh, do I wanna use orange or do I wanna use black? Hmm. Let's, let's take a look, see what we think. Um, I don't know, actually either would work. I guess let's go orange, why not? I use a lot of my black stars. Let's use an orange star for this one. All right, so those are the little adhesive stars. I have my baddie for you on there. And then we're gonna decorate our very last page with a very simple happy Halloween to you. And that can go, you know, depending on your pattern. I mean, you can decide where you want that to go. I'm gonna put it right between these two jack-o'-lanterns right here. And did I even, oh, see, I didn't stand up. And a little crooked. Okay, I could fix it there. All right, so now we can go back to the card front and let's see how we did on our. Oh, you know what? I forgot something. I have one more item sitting here that we need to add to our card. We have an owl here. I'm going to take my owl. This is the front of the owl. So he has um, eyes and a nose. So I want those uh, to be crushed curry. Um, so I'm going to put a half inch square of crushed curry behind my little owl here. Stick that down. I had put a little bit, you can see on my other backup owl here, um, I put some of the multi-purpose liquid glue, which is right here, on there and let it dry. This glue dries tacky, so that way I didn't have to worry about any weird bits oozing out or anything. And it, I just slapped the square on there so that it shows through for his cute little eyes but I don't want him to have a crushed curry beak. I want his beak to be, uh, let's go pumpkin pie on the beak. So I've just got my pumpkin pie Stampin' Right marker and I'm just going to fill in his beak there. So let's take a look at him. So there we have our little owl. I have no idea where he's going. We'll have to figure, we'll have to find a place for him. Let's review our card here and see where we want to put our little um, owl. So less trick and more treating with our spooky spiders and our glittery spider web there. And then on the next page, we've got these adorable little not so scary skeleton head skulls with tombstones and which way to the candy. And then we're going to turn to page this page and we've got our baddie for you. And again, we used the little um, star there. You know, I'm not liking the orange. Guys, I got to change it. Sorry. Oh my goodness. I'm not liking that so much. I'm almost wondering about this kind of, whoa, purpley color. 
I think that might be the ticket. Yeah, I'm going purple on this one. I like that better. All right, so we have our baddie for you. And then our last page, we've got happy Halloween to you and our place for our greeting. And that is where I'm going to add my cute little owl, just as a little something extra. Card does not need him at all, but he's sure cute, right? Um, and of course, you could put him on one of the other pages that you felt needed a little something extra. So I'm going to put a glue dot partially over that square and partially over the owl. And let's add another glue dot so that he doesn't go anywhere. And take our, put those aside and we'll add our little owl right there. So again, you could decorate this card for the holidays, uh, for a birthday, doesn't matter. You can use different products. It's a great way to use your designer series paper and your dies and your stamps. You're going to really let your imagination go crazy with decorating. And you could even leave these panels more uh, plain and add lots of um, stamping and uh, decorate them in other ways. So that is our, <clears throat> let's get the name right, Susan, pinwheel tower card. And those are the dimensions. Um, again, this is the dimension on that greeting for that last panel. So I'm going to flip the camera so I can say goodbye. Thanks so much for joining me tonight for this fun project. And uh, it was it was fun to share it with you. And it is really easy card. So I would encourage you to give it a try. And uh, have a great week, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.